Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm the host and owner of the Fit With Faith podcast, where we talk about real stories, real struggles, and real life. And just so you know, God is always a part of the conversation. I'm glad you're here. Now let's dive in. Hello, hello. I am so kind of nervous for this episode. This is the first real episode. And if you happen to be watching me on YouTube, I'm wearing, you know, my sweater. My same God knew me sweater. Best sweater ever, just saying. Do I have two of these? Absolutely. Do I need two of them? No, but I needed like one to wear out and one to kind of just wear that's huge. So I do have an extra large version on right now. But I digress. That's totally not what we're talking about today. Just a subtle plug to my merch. Um, Today, we are talking about one of the most commonly asked questions, honestly. So I get asked all the time things about baptism, like, is baptism worth it? Do you need to be baptized to be saved? So on and so forth. Well, let me start off by saying that you were saved by Jesus before you were born when he sacrificed himself on the cross, and that's a birthright. You do not have to technically be baptized to be saved. You were saved by God the moment that that happened. Jesus died, was born again, resurrected, however you've learned it, to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit and to save us and to allow us to have a relationship with God because it is in simple terms. He opened the gates of heaven gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we are saved then. Like I said, before we were even born, before we were existed, before anyone knew who we were, before you were even a thought in your parents' womb, before your parents were here, all the things, like way back into existence. That was a little dramatic, but you know, that's fine. And so I get asked a lot, like I said, is it worth it? Do I need to do it? Well, whether it's worth it and whether you need to do it are two very different things is it worth it 1000% I would tell anybody in the world that getting baptized is 100% worth it because that is your commitment to God that you want to give your life to him now do you have to do it that is a very in my opinion that's a very personal thing um what I tell you to 1000% I would tell you you need to you should but I also feel like it needs to be something that happens to you and like in your relationship with God, whether you do it or not, when you do it, so on and so forth. Because of the way I grew up, I was born and raised into the Catholic church. I went to Catholic school. So I was baptized as a baby. That was the first sacrament that I received. Now, the way that I look at it as an adult is that when my parents decided to baptize me as a baby, I was given in a sense to God and my parents asked him for protection. Now, obviously I didn't make that choice. I was a baby, but my parents decided to baptize me in the church by a priest so that God would protect me and my life. And that was their sacrifice of me to God. As I got older, um, I did what majority of us do, went to Catholic school all the way up until my junior year of high school and then my at the end of junior year and then my senior year I went to public school did I practice as much no I did attend a couple youth groups with my friend but it wasn't something that I did all the time obviously we didn't study anymore I was in public school I didn't have theology class didn't have a religion class and then in my private school we had religion Every day we went to, and all the way up until eighth grade, we went to church every Friday. And then in high school, we went to church once a month, but I had theology class and none, a nun was the principal of my school. And it was just something that was, it was normal. It was regular. It was talked about in school, but it wasn't talked about in the sense of how I talk about it now. It wasn't, it wasn't preached about. It wasn't something that was like open conversation in religion class. It was kind of something where it was like, this is the book. This is the Bible. This is what you need to believe. And that's that. As I grew up, that wasn't something that I inherently obviously continued to see or hear. And when I got into college, it wasn't like I had theology class. Could I have taken a theology class? Probably, I guess. I didn't like look into that, but I probably could have, I guess. I would assume that they offer that. Um, 
But I didn't, I didn't go to church anymore. Um, didn't really have a home church because I moved away from the churches that I knew. And when I moved to Colorado, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to find a church. What, do I look back and think I should have done that? Wish I would have done that? Absolutely. I wish I would have kept this in my life. Um, but I didn't. And that's pretty much kind of normal, I feel like, nowadays. Is kids that go to private schools, more often than not, tend to fall off when they're an adult. And if even if you didn't go to private school and it's just something that you grew up doing when you're an adult, you just you fall away from it. It's, it's kind of normal, unfortunately. And I hope that more... Well, I say that, but, you know, I feel like now religion's even less involved in people's lives than it was when I was growing up. So I would love to say that I hope more people don't fall off as they grow up, but to be perfectly frank, as you know, religion is being taken out of schools, it's being taken out of kids' lives, and I'm, I'm trying to make a difference in that area. I'm hoping to bring more people to God and bring more people to Christ. So as I got older, um, I found myself, and this is me concising this story, I found myself Looking back, I definitely did have a void in my life. I definitely was searching for love in all the wrong places. I was getting into relationships I, I shouldn't have. I was being taken advantage of in those relationships. I was I was missing something. Looking back on what I know now, I can look at Jessica from the ages of, let's see, 18 to 24, in around 25. I was missing something. And it's very evident to me now, but at the time I didn't know that. I thought I was missing love. I was getting into relationships that looking for love in that person rather than looking for love in myself and in God. Did I still believe in God? Absolutely. Did I still talk to God? Yeah, sometimes I would pray, but it wasn't part of my life anymore. It wasn't really something that I dedicated myself to, which again, wish I would have. But when I part of my story that everyone always asks that I'm just going to like throw this in here. I definitely need to do a podcast like really diving into my story, but I feel like that's going to be a multi podcast kind of situation because that's going to be a few years of my life that I have to unravel to all y'all and oh good heaven, that's going to take some time. But when I was right before I turned 25, I... <sighs> I'm going to say it how it happened. I had a mild heart attack. Um, what caused it? God did. And everyone's probably just like, oh my God, God caused you to have a heart attack? That's not right. See, I knew God was mean. No, God is not mean. And no, God did not have me have a heart attack to be mean to me. No, that's not the point at all. So let's explain that before I go any further. So... How did this happen? To be perfectly honest, out of nowhere, about four o'clock in the morning, just finished eating breakfast, was putting my plate in the dishwasher at the house I lived in at the time. And all of a sudden, it was like everything in the room stopped, but my heart rate just exploded. I felt like my whole body was moving and vibrating, but at the same time, not moving. And I couldn't catch my breath, but like couldn't, like I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. I could feel my pulse throughout my body. And I was like, okay, I'm just having, I'm having a mild pain. I'm having a panic attack. That's why I just gotta, I just gotta lay down. Trying to breathe, couldn't breathe. <laughs> lay down on the couch, set a timer for like 10 minutes. And I was like, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'm just gonna lay here. What should have kind of cued me in that something was wrong, really wrong. And I mean, it did, but I ignored it because I was like, I'll be okay. Avalanche is a service animal, and when I laid down, Avalanche literally laid his entire body on top of my body like a blanket, and I kept trying to just close my eyes. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I just need to close my eyes. I just need to sleep here for a second, and excuse me. Um, yeah, no, that didn't happen. The alarm went off. My heart was still going, and then I went to stand up, and it was like my head weighed a 1,000 pounds. And everything in my body was screaming at me, something's wrong, something's wrong. Didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to relax. And I went into the person that I was with at the time I was living with him. I went into the room, laid down next to him, and I was like, something's wrong. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong. I said, my head feels like it's going to explode. My heart's not calming down. I feel like my heart's beating out of my chest. Something's wrong. 
do you want to go to the hospital? No, I don't want to go to the hospital. I fought going to the hospital for about three hours. <laughs> oh, I should have just gone. But I, I didn't want to. I have a weird thing with hospitals. I don't feel comfortable in them. They, I just, eh. Everything in me was like, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. So I didn't. Um, again, fought it. Kept trying to go to sleep. Kept going in and out. Every time I tried to like look up, whatever the case was, any kind of noise felt like I, someone just hit me in the head with a hammer. And I was freaking out but also unable to like really freak out because of the way my body felt and he kept trying to tell me like we need to go to the hospital we need to go to the hospital and I was like no I don't want to go to the hospital and like you know how you have those veins in the temples of your head I could literally feel it and he could see it pulsing and I could feel it in my neck my everything in me like every vein in my arm was popping out like it was not a fun time I had the Fitbit um on that I'm wearing now and my heart rate was inching in the 150s but like as my heart was going that fast my whole body just like could not function and I got up at one point to go use the bathroom and I could not even open my eyes I was like excuse me I'm so sorry I'm yawning um I walked towards the bathroom with my eyes closed luckily obviously I was familiar with my situ my area so I knew how to get there I get back on the bed and he was like, Jess, like, we need to go to the hospital. And I finally was like, okay. And at this point, it's about eight something, maybe almost nine in the morning. And he goes, um, gets the things he, need, he needs to get so that he could be ready. And grabbed me, my power at zero. And as I'm like trying to put clothes on, I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be in there. So I put on something comfortable was trying to move as slow as humanly possible. And I get in the car. As soon as I get in the car and, like, was sitting up, that was it. All my breakfast came up, threw up everything. Still have not had cream of rice <laughs> since that day. Um, fast forward, I'm in the hospital. They made me wait, like, three, four hours before finally putting me in the bag. I threw up multiple times, was passing out left and right my heart rate was still in the 150s and the long story short the reason why they didn't set me in faster was they're like you need to see someone like we need to get you like a legit like this is not okay um again fast forward I'm on the gurney in the house in the hallway and they put on the heart rate monitor they do all the things and they tell me like given your blood work like you you've had a mild heart attack but my heart rate still wasn't slowing down my blood pressure was exploding but, like, it was weird. My blood pressure was going up, but then, like, crashing. And then I was crashing. And, again, I was still throwing up. I, like, felt like I was going to throw up because of my heart rate. And, of course, at the time, they still had the COVID protocols. So, they had to test me for COVID and then isolate me. And I was in the hospital. I won't go into, like, the gory details of being in the hospital. But, uh, like I said, that's going to be a podcast for another time where I tell you about that experience because that was definitely a life-changing experience for me. And it was in the hospital that that was the first time that I genuinely heard God. And I'm a type A kind of person. I am a type A personality, always have to be going, always have to be moving, and when I tell you I spent two weeks in the hospital absolutely still, I was. It was the the calmest I'd ever felt. And I'm someone that worked out seven days a week. Always needed to work out. I love working out. I didn't like rest days. I was able to sit in that hospital for two weeks. And for some reason, just relax for the first time in god knows how long honestly probably since I was a kid like eighth grade freshman year of high school that was the first time that I was able to genuinely relax y'all I finished a dang coloring book you know how relaxed you have to be to finish a coloring book sheesh and in the hospital it was like something changed. And like I said, I'm going to go more into detail on this on another podcast episode where I really tell you my story. But I don't know. I was by myself most of the time. I was in pitch black darkness because 
my my headaches were so bad. I was on morphine and Percocet at the same time, and I could barely function, could barely eat anything, couldn't even really get up without feeling like I was going to pass out. Um, yeah, every light hurt, couldn't really look at my phone, couldn't really talk to anybody. I, I slept for like a day. They were doing MRIs, CAT scans. I had um, EKGs going every day. They were always checking my blood, always taking blood, hooked up to an IV, like literally the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. I genuinely, and I'm just going to throw this in there, I genuinely thought I was going to die. And I was okay with it. Because like I said, it was the first time I heard God, and I'm not going to say exactly what God said now, because I definitely have to tell you more of the story to do that, but... I I really did. I was like, okay, cool. This is how I died. This is how I died. And that's that. I, I don't know what else I, I have to give. I, I really was in a very low point in my life. And unbeknown to me, I was in a Catholic Christian hospital. Didn't know that. Until one day, I was sitting in my room. And all of a sudden, I'd never heard it before, but all of a sudden I heard these like alarm bells go off. And it was like an alarm throughout the hospital saying that it was time to pray. And I listened to the prayer. And I was I was taken aback. I was like, wait, what? And this and I looked on my phone, like what hospital I was in, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in like a Christian hospital. I said, what are the odds? Like this wasn't the closest hospital to the house, so I was just kind of like, hmm, okay. And so one day, I I don't I don't really remember. Like I, I think I oh I put on my I put on my form when I first got in the hospital that I was Christian. Um, I might have I don't know if I checked off Catholic or Christian at the time, but I definitely checked one of them off. And it was like the day after I heard that prayer, it's just out of nowhere, a priest comes in to my room. And I thought, oh, okay, so this is really it, God. Like, this is, this is, you want me to have confession before you take me. That's cool. All right, cool. Got it. I understand. And... I sat there and I, I, he asked me if it was okay to like do confession and to pray with me and to talk to me and I did and I was very honest with him and I told him exactly how I was feeling and told him I didn't understand, told him I didn't feel like I had anything to live for um, and I, I bawled like a baby, I was crying and he looked at me and we, he performed the sacrament of confession and we talked and he helped me and he looked at me and he was like, would you be okay with me performing the anointing of the sick? Which again, that told me like, okay, yeah, like this is how God wants to take me. Okay, this is it. And if you know anything about like Catholic religion, you know that like the anointing of the sick is a very, very like, it's a very important sacrament. So if you receive the anointing of the sick, it's kind of one that like you either may get it in your lifetime or you may not, but it's not the most common thing in the world. So when he did that, I, I genuinely was like, okay, this is it. This is how I go. And the next day, I woke up and I was able to turn the lights on in my room. Didn't Couldn't have them on all day, but I at least I could have them on. And I was like, huh. Okay. And so let's fast forward to when I got out of the hospital, all the things, I, I just felt like, I literally felt like God saved me. I did. I genuinely was like, okay, he saved me. He got me alone. Didn't really fully understand why yet, but it was like something in me just flipped. I wanted to go back to church. I wanted to study again. I started listening to sermons. I started really researching things again. And just kind of getting myself back into my faith. And I even told the guy I was with at the time, I said, I want to go to church. I, I want to go back to church. I want to start praying again. And so 
he like, we never ended up going together. Things happened. Relationship fell apart. I had to move back home. But when I moved back home, that's when God really started to work on me. And we'll, again, we'll go into that more in another episode. But I started going back to church again. I found Voo Church. And I went. I never missed. Didn't miss a Sunday as long as I was home. I didn't see Rich Wilkerson live at the time. But I definitely went every Sunday night. And I started to feel a lot more connected to God. I started feeling like, okay, this is what I was missing. I'm starting to understand myself. And I read... Rich Wilkerson's book, Single and Secure, which at the time he was also doing a a series on it in the church. So went through that and I just, I knew I didn't want to stay in Miami. That's not, not my place. And so started deciding where I wanted to go. Um, Found Elevation Church at the time through Rich Wilkerson because, and Because of things he had said, and then because I also listened to Sadie Robertson and just Elevation, just, I found them. I found, I didn't, and I also didn't realize how long I'd been listening to Elevation worship music until it was like thrown in my face by when Rich said something and then when I heard Sadie say something. And I was like, wait, I've been listening to this church forever. And so I was like, okay. Where is this church? And I found out that it was in North Carolina. And I was like, I want to go there. I want to be there. Like, I watched the sermons online on YouTube. And I was like, I want to be there. I want to go there. Like, I want to be at this church. I need to be at this church. I need to be here. So, the the moment that I decided, or I was in between whether I wanted to go to Texas or North Carolina, I it just so happened. It's actually next week. Wow, this is... This is definitely a full cir- another full circle moment because it's actually next week that is Stephen Furtick's birthday. And I was still in Miami at the time and I went to church, but Rich wasn't there. Rich was here in North Carolina preaching at Elevation because it was Stephen Furtick's birthday. And I was like, that's it. That's my sign. I'm moving to North Carolina. I'm going. I'm going to go to this church. I need to be here. And when I tell you this church has saved my life and changed my life at the same time I'm not exaggerating whatsoever there is a genuine godly presence in this church and the Holy Spirit is so anointed by with Stephen Furtick and he is someone that I could listen to talk all day and I am blessed beyond belief that I'm at this church because so when I started coming here to Elevation, or going to Elevation, I should say, it was like every week he told me something I needed to hear. And every week I just got closer and closer to God. And the first day that I went to Elevation was Christmas of, not Christmas, my goodness, Jessica, Easter of 2022. That was the first day that I went to Elevation. And at first I was in overflow and a lady like literally popped her head out of the door with her finger raised, singling one. And I went, Hugh! and shot my hand up so dang fast, got up, and she like pulled me in, and I was able to get into the auditorium, which was very hard for most people. And I definitely didn't show up early enough that day. So how I got in there, it was definitely God. Like God wanted me in there, and it was absolutely amazing. And hold on, let me restart my I'm putting this on YouTube too guys for all you people so I'm gonna restart okay because I was reaching the end of like a limit um but got in there and I cried the entire time I was in there and he preached the sermon the facts aren't final and I, I, I could not stop crying the whole time and I raised my hand that day and said I'm giving my life to Christ And they gave me the Bible and I just was like sitting there in awe and I was like, this is where I need to be. God knew I needed to be here. And it's funny because I lived in North Carolina for a few weeks before finally being like, okay, I'm going. Because I was nervous. I was nervous. I was intimidated. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even fit in here. And I have found home with Elevation Church. I genuinely have. And since that day of 
Easter 2022, I have not missed a single day of church besides the ones like New Year's Eve when it's online, of course. And then there was one Sunday that I wasn't at Elevation Church, like my home location, but I went to the Greenville location because it was my cousin's wedding weekend. But God knew what I needed and he answered me in ways that I never thought would be like a God thing. Like, who the heck thinks they're going to have a heart attack and it's from God? Like, I still tell that to people when they're like, oh my God, what caused it? And everyone was like, too much pre-workout, too much caffeine, too much stress, da, da, da. I was like, no, it was God. God needed to get me alone because like something that I say to a lot of people is like, you don't understand that God is trying to talk to you every single day and oftentimes for us to finally hear what he wants us to tell us, we have to be alone. Like we're often crowded by the people around us, the things, that, the distractions of this world, society, the stress, the, everything is such a distraction as to God trying to talk to us that we can't hear him. And like I say a lot of the time, the devil screams while God is whispering. So if you want to hear God, you have to silence the devil. And God's way of silencing the devil was putting me in the hospital because yeah, I did have all the negative thoughts, but at the end of the day, I was in a quiet place away from everything away from all distractions I couldn't work couldn't go to the gym couldn't fill my days with distractions and God was able to talk to me and work on me and show up in my dreams and make me closer to him again so when the time came for me to really contemplate baptism was when I heard at Elevation we were having like baptism weekend. Now, like I told you in the beginning, I was baptized as a baby. I'd never heard of people getting baptized more than once. But to go along with 2022, that was the first time that I had a word of the year. And I heard Sadie Robertson say it on her podcast because I listened to her religiously. And... She said that she picks a word for the year. And I listened to her luckily like before twenty, the new year of 2022. So I was able to pick my own word. And I my word was redeemed. I wanted to be redeemed in the eyes of God. I wanted my faith to be redeemed. I wanted to be redeemed as a person. And because that was my word of 2022, I started when they brought up baptism weekend. And I really started to think like, huh, can people be baptized twice? I was like, because I truly felt like God was redeeming my relationship with him and redeeming who I was as a person because my mom also gifted me with, if you're on YouTube, you can see my Bible. And if you've been on my TikTok, you've seen my Bible. But my mom gifted this to me as my Easter present. It was It's an NLT Bible from Dayspring. It's called the One Step Closer Bible. And I absolutely love this thing. It has so many post-it notes in it that you wouldn't believe. All different colors. I got bookmarks. I got stickers. I got note cards in here, but I started to read this. I read the entire New Testament in 2022. And 2023, I started diving into the Old Testament, which still going through that, it's a little confusing. And I also, we'll talk about 2023 another day, because whatever, that's not the topic of the conversation right now. But, backwards. They brought up baptism weekend. I started thinking, can I be baptized twice? Is that a thing? Because this year I committed to being redeemed with God and I feel like I need to show him that I'm committed. Because he has been redeeming my spirit, he's been redeeming my mind. So, hmm. Started looking up a few things, but never really had, like some people said yes, some people said no. And I, to give you some background information, in Catholic school I did receive the sacrament of communion and the sacrament of confirmation. Again, I was like 11 when I did confirmation which in the Catholic religion, that's considered you confirming your faith. But I didn't know what I was doing. I was in seventh grade for Pete's sake. And I wasn't going to be the kid to be like, no, I don't want to be confirmed. I'm not ready. Because what, what is that going to do for me? I don't even know what being ready meant at the time. So I remember after church one day, I stopped um, JJ, Pastor JJ. And I said, like, hey, I have a question. So gave him a little bit of a rundown on my past because it just so happened that our baptism weekend was the week before my heart attack happened. My heart attack happened August 27th of 2020, 
one and baptism weekend was literally the week before told him a little bit of things and I was like is it a thing like can you be baptized twice I said because the way that like I see it now and I feel like God is telling me this is like when I was a baby my parents baptized me for protection I said but me being baptized as an adult I feel like that's me committing myself to God and making the choice with God like I'm giving my life to you like I genuinely am giving my life to you my life is yours I want a stronger relationship with you and because my word was redeemed I felt like that was my true tale of God I want to be redeemed you've already redeemed me the last eight months I want I genuinely want this I fully want this and he was like absolutely genuinely want you to do that if that's on your heart do it so I did and I've been a completely different person in all the best ways have I had my moments of doubt yes we all do it's normal but the day that I got rebaptized, I thought I was going to cry and I'm about to cry right now but I thought I was going to cry that day but, I don't know, I just felt so at peace. Like, I just was kind of like, a, I took a big deep breath and was like, oh, finally. Now, we'll talk about how the enemy attacks you after you make this commitment another day. But, baptism isn't something you have to do. And... If you want to get technical, it's not something you necessarily need to do. But is it something you should do 100%? Because there is no bigger commitment to God than being baptized by his name. And fully committing yourself to living your life with Christ. Now, is there people that get baptized and genuinely fall off or... Don't fully commit themselves to Christ. Is there people that are what we like to call lukewarm Christians or bad Christians, however you want to say it? Sure. But if you feel on in your heart that you want to give your life to Christ, be baptized. I've actually had some of my clients tell me that because I'm the one that brought them back to God, that they want me to back. All right. That was weird. My phone like took my microphone off. Just totally interrupted my whole aura that I had going. That's, thanks, phone, thank you. And I even said this was going to be unedited, so here you go. That's proof that, like, I don't know what the heck just happened. But that's cool. That's fine. Fine phone. Awesome. So, I don't even remember what I was saying for ADHD. Awesome. Well. Alrighty. Oh, my clients. Yes. So, yes, I have had clients of mine tell me that because I'm the one that brought them back to Christ they would like me to baptize them and then I had people going is that illegal is that allowed like you can't do that you're not a priest you're not ordained well you know what neither was John the Baptist and he's the one that baptized Jesus why did John the Baptist feel the need to baptize people because God told him to so if my clients feel the need to be baptized and they are want me to have the honor of baptizing them I will 100% do it in the name of Jesus Christ because ultimately as God is my witness that is all I really need and that is what they need is to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and to be baptized with God as their witness and with the Holy Spirit in their heart because man being able to be baptized and I say being able to be baptized because there are people that aren't And may never will be baptized, but I promise being baptized is is a gift. And it's a choice, but it's a choice you need to make with God. It's not a choice you need to make because like everyone else is doing it, I'm gonna be baptized, or oh I wanna I wanna do this, so I'm gonna be baptized. No, you genuinely need to have it on your heart because your heart and your soul need to be aligned and you need to be in such a good place where it's like, yeah, I'm ready. Because that's the thing is like you have to be ready for it. And I say that because I promise you 
and I will explain this more on another day, but I promise you the devil attacks God's people the hardest because he wants nothing more than to pull you away from God. And when you get baptized, that's like signing a contract with God of like, I'm yours. And the devil wants nothing more than to burn that contract. He really does. And he will attack you left and right. Every uppercut, every hook, every like everything comes at you. And if you fully are ready to commit your life to God through baptism, you need to understand that you have God's strength, but you have to utilize it. All the gifts that God gives us in the Bible, you have at your fingertips and you have in your heart and you have in your soul, but so many people just don't use it. You don't. You don't realize that if you just call on God to help you, if you just ask God for some strength, you ask God for help, He will give it to you. He loves you. And if you're choosing to be baptized in His name to give your life to Him, there is nothing He wants more than to help you even further and to give you the things that you need because you're His child. And if you commit to Him, He's going to commit to you even more. God, God does not forsake you and God, there's nothing you can do to make God not love you. But man, the relationship that you can have with him once you fully commit yourself to him, there's nothing more powerful. Because with God, all things are possible. And I genuinely want to find a verse for you real quick. About... Well, I'm going to read it from John. That, let's see if I can find this real quick. Now you know this is genuinely unedited because I brain farted. Okay. So in John, the book of John, 1 John, chapter 4, 9 and 10. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into this world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Imagine that. You weren't even made. You weren't even a thought on this world yet. And Jesus Christ died for your salvation. So if you commit yourself to God, it's almost like saying thank you. Thank you for saving me. Now I want to be saved. And I want to continue to be saved. And I want to have a relationship with you. And I want to grow this relationship with you. And God, I promise, I promise to call on you. And I promise that I'm always going to find you and seek you first. And like I said, we're human. We mess up. We make mistakes. But you need to fully understand that you are a child of God. And God wants nothing more than for you to be happy and to have joy and to feel loved and to be loved and to experience His love. Because, y'all, God is love. So if you want to have love from another person, you have to know what God's love is. And God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God says you're loved time and time again in the Bible. God says that through him all things are possible. And God says that when the world tells you that you're not enough, I say you're more than enough. That's, that's the God you need to understand. That's the God you need to know. And that's the love you need. And I will firmly say that with baptism, you're able to experience that love on a totally different level. Because you do intrinsically create this spiritual bond with God in that moment. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to have. So if you've ever questioned whether you should be baptized or not, my answer is yeah. If you feel like you're ready for it and you feel like it's something that you need and that you want to get closer to God, do it. Get baptized. 
you'll probably feel really great after. <laughs> and if you've been baptized as a baby and you're an adult now, or even if you were baptized as a teenager and you're an adult now and you kind of just, you want to recommit, in my eyes, there's nothing wrong with being baptized twice. Just, I will encourage you, if you're going to get baptized again, don't make the same mistakes you once made. See this as a renewal because that's what baptism technically is, is a washing away of your sins to have a new life. Appreciate that and honor that. Don't take advantage of your new life. Don't make the same mistakes you once made. Give your life to God and let yourself be made new because God loves you so much that he, he forgives you of your past. So if you're going to get baptized, you need to forgive yourself from your past. And fully live like a child of God. Because, don't forget, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, I don't really know how to end, but I feel like that was a good ending. So, <laughs> yeah. I think giving your life to Christ is a blessing. But if you like this episode, please like, comment, leave me a note. If there's something you want me to explain, there's some questions you have, please comment below. Um, I will have my Instagram and TikTok in the show notes and just slash description. Again, don't really know how all this works, so I'll figure it out. It'll probably be in the description somewhere. I think that's how it works. And yeah, I look forward to talking with you guys next week. Um, we're going to go into a series next week on the enemy's lies. So I'll give you a little sneak peek. Episode one is going to be probably one of the biggest lies that the enemy tells you and that it's I'm not enough. Because we all think that at some point in time and I'm going to give you all the reasons why you are more than enough. So stay tuned for next week. If you are watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys. And like I said, don't forget, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Till next time. Thank you so much for listening to the Fit With Aid podcast. I really hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope you come back next week. Until then, have a good one.